Hi, my name is Stan Yanitsky, and I'm going to go over a demo of Pure One Manage. What we see here is the landing page, which is the card view. The goal of the card view is to give an overview of each array in your environment. You can see right away that we have uh, an array that's running out of capacity, and you can see the notifications on the variety of the arrays. You can click on the notification and flip the card to see what those notifications are. You can sort by a variety of different metrics, and that gives you the ability to customize the dashboard in whatever way you want. If we go to the expanded card view, you can see right away that we've got flash blades and flash arrays in the environment. So this is one of those things that Pure One is very focused on making sure that you can see all of our products in Pure One Manage in a single monitoring tool. You can see here we have object engines as well. And once Cloud Block Store is available, we will support Cloud Block Store. Moving on to the dashboard, if the card view is an individual view of your entire fleet, you can see each individual array, the dashboard is an aggregated view. So you can see your overall capacity utilization, how many appliances you have, how many buckets and file systems, and so on. You can see your aggregated data reduction and reduction information, and some forecasting information. Down here is your top 10 charts. Each one of these charts are customizable, and it gives you the ability to see what's going on in your environment. Here you have recent updates, and this gives you information about alerts and cases that have been updated recently. And then finally at the bottom, you have protection information, so for your snapshots and your replication. Moving on, you have your performance page. This gives you performance information about your arrays, your volumes, your pods, file systems for the past month. So you could go down, you could see here we've got latency, IOPS bandwidth, and you have load down here. Now, load is a metric that we provide you in order to understand what your performance utilization is. That's basically how utilized is your array from a performance perspective. Think about it just like capacity, from 0 to 100% full, just for the performance side of things. Moving on to the capacity page, we have information about the array's capacity. You can sort on any of these metrics in order to see what's going on, as well as the growth in the past 30 days. But ultimately, the tool that you want to use to figure out what you're going to do with your environment is the Forecast tab. So here you have a list of all your arrays. I've selected this one particular array because it's a very good example. What you see here is the workload has been flat for a relatively long time and has increased recently. So what you could do is, right now, we're forecasting against that entire workload. You can take the training window and change it in order to exclude that flat part and only forecast against the most recent part of the workload, since we assume that's what's going to be the future workload. This allows you to customize the forecast method. We can only forecast as good as the data we get, and this allows you to customize and limit the data that we're looking at in order to get a more accurate prediction. You could do the same thing for the capacity page, which makes it very clear that from the capacity perspective, we're in trouble. Going to the hardware page, this is where you can kind of figure out what you're doing with that problem. So right now we have an M50 installed. You can click on the X50R2 in order to simulate an upgrade to an X50, and you can see that's going to drop the load on the array by about 15%. And you could add capacity. So I'm going to add an NVMe shelf now that we're in an X50. And I can add either 31 terabytes uh, and see that it's going to take me from running out of capacity in one month to having six months worth of run rate. And then I can add another data pack. And you can see we automatically restrict the data packs that you can add based on the maximum capacity of the array. So I can add another 31 terabyte data pack, and now I have 11 months worth of run rate, and that's great. If we go back to the training window, we can see what that looks like on the graphs. And ultimately, you could simulate upgrades to other models, so an X70 or even an X90. So this X90 will drop our load by 42% and will give us plenty of headroom to manage this workload. Ultimately, what this gives you is the ability to plan for your environment. You don't need to worry about over-provisioning as much because you have the information in order to make the right decision for the time. Moving on to VM Analytics, 
This is a new tool that we launched relatively recently that gives you the ability to see your VMware infrastructure. So now that we collect the information, uh, we have the username, password, and IP address of the vCenter. Everything shows up in Pure One automatically. You can choose which metric shows up on the node. So right now we're looking at read latency, and that changes the sort order on each one of these uh, nodes. If we look at something like total IOPS, this will show you your top talkers. So these are the VMs that have done the most IOPS in the past 24 hours. And if I go the other way, these are the VMs that haven't done anything. These are powered off VMs or have had very little workload in the past 24 hours. These VMs are the VMs that you might look at reclaiming resources. So that's one of the ways you could use VM analytics. Let's go back to latency because that's the main use case that we were focused on. So taking a look at write latency, what I can do is I can click on a node in order to highlight it. So for example, if I wanted to see which VMs were attached to this array, I just click on it and it highlights the paths and it shows you which VMs are on that array. You can click on any of the nodes. So if you want to look at this volume, you can see which VMs are on that volume. One thing you could see very quickly is that this volume is attached to all hosts except for one. Maybe that's an issue. Um, so it gives you a very quick way to uh, visually troubleshoot information about connectivity. Now, if you click on a particular VM, it highlights the path that VM has to the array. This allows you to see which volume and array it's on very easily. The use case here is filtering down to that particular path. It gives you the ability to focus in on exactly that VM. So what we see right away is that the array and the volume that this VM is on have extremely low latency, almost half a millisecond. So what we know right away is that the array isn't causing the issue. Let's assume that seven milliseconds is out of the ordinary for this v particular VM. We look at the data store and the host, and we, we see that they both have around a millisecond of latency, and that's not causing the issue. So what that means is, uh, if I'm doing my troubleshooting, the host is not overloaded. It's not causing the latency on the VM. The data store, we use it as kind of a proxy for the network. The, data, the network and there's nothing in the data store that is causing this latency issue. So that means when I want to do my troubleshooting, I want to look at the VM and the disk. This gives you the ability to focus your troubleshooting efforts without having to try to figure out where you need to look. Moving on to the rest of Pure One, we have our snapshot catalog. This allows you to view the snapshots in your entire environment, whether they're local, whether they're replicated, or even if they're replicated to an NFS or even if they're replicated to an NFS target or uh, an S3 target. You can see uh, protection group information. So these are all replicated protection groups and status of that. And active cluster information. This will show you uh, whether the pods are in sync, out of sync, and if they are out of sync, how long they've been out of sync for. And it gives you good, pretty good information about your active cluster setup. Uh, you have the ability to view your alerts, your audit log. Now, this gives you the user information, command, and subcommand that the that user ran. And you can export this, so this is pretty good for audit purposes. And a session log, which is who logged in and for how long. Finally, you can manage your cases. And ultimately, um, here you have your API registration and the address view, which is one of our newest features that we launched. It gives you the ability to view where your arrays are on a map, and you can update the address on your arrays right in Pier 1. So you can click on the node, select an array, and you can click Update Address. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.